Today I want to talk about one of my favorite species of snakes. It's a new world rat snake and it is almost never talked about. A lot of people don't know about it and I think part of the reason why is that it is probably the number one victim of North American rat snake taxonomy issues. Now this is called the yellow red rat snake otherwise known as their Latin name, Pseudolaphae flavarufa. And that's usually what I refer to them as, and that's probably what I'm going to continue to for the rest of this video. Now, this rat snake is found down in parts of Southern Mexico, as well as parts of Central America, including some of the countries down at the bottom of Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, near the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, the Pseudolaphae flavarufa unfortunately gets labeled as a lot of different names, and that's because there are three different subspecies that are currently recognized, as well as an additional species in the genus Pseudolaphae. Pseudolaphae being the genus that Elaphae, as some of you other rat snake aficionados know, used to be what almost all rat snakes were categorized, and then it started to get broken up a lot. So Pseudo in the Latin terms means almost similar, not, and then Laffe, which actually means deer-like, but that's a Laffe was the genus that all of the rat snakes were part in. So Pseudo Laffe, meaning somewhat like the rat snake. So it's kind of really silly. But these guys are oftentimes wild caught and they are collected down in those areas and they are brought into the United States, all usually under the term Pseudo Laffe flavarufa, even though there are multiple subspecies and an additional recognized species. So because of that, they have a ton of different names, which include, but are not limited to, Mexican rat snake, tropical rat snake, Mexican night rat snake, the Honduran rat snake, the Tamalapian rat snake, the Central American rat snake, the Escolinta rat snake, the Honduran night snake, the night walker, the Rotan Island rat snake, and the Central American corn snake, and others. I can't believe I got that all in one take. Now, because of that, that's why I usually just stick with Pseudolaphe favorita, as well as I'm very confident that a lot of the different species we worked with, unless exactly specified which subspecies they are, are probably all mixes. Another source of confusion is that they are often labeled as night snakes, which are several different species of snakes that are all called night snakes. Some of them are in the same genus throughout the New World. Though They are a rear-fanged, venomous, colubrid species. These guys are a rat snake species, so not quite the same thing. When you first look at these guys, they look very similar to a corn snake, especially like, you know, the regular red looking corn snakes. But there are several differences that I think make it a really cool species of snake. So when you first look at it, the size is very similar. They average four feet. They can get a little bit longer, just like the corn snake. They have kind of like a yellow creamish off-white background color with those kind of reddish orange giraffe reticulated pattern that are kind of similar to a corn snake, but these seem to be a little bit more unique and individualized. And there may even be distinct differences between the separate species of Pseudolaphe and the three different subspecies, but not enough is really known a whole lot. And doing my best to research them, I can't find any exact distinction between the three, but maybe someone who works with them who sees this video, let me know because I'd really like to talk a little bit more about that and learn more too. So in addition to those things, their head seems to be a little bit more elongated, and that might have to do with the type of prey that they eat, and we'll get into that in a minute. They also have really long tails, and they're a little bit more slender body. So when you look at a corn snake, males usually have a little bit longer tails than females. That's with a lot of species of colubrids, but the pseudolaphae from the vent to the tip of the tail averages a little bit longer than the corn snakes and a lot of other rat snake species, as well as one of the most prominent that I'm sure a lot of people are waiting for me to talk about are their giant, almost bug-eyed silver eyes that as they mature, they do kind of grow into a little bit that turn to an almost like a bluish gunmetal gray color. Really, really cool. A lot of these are probably adaptations about where they're found and what they eat. Now, not a whole lot is known about these in general, so I'm going with mostly iNaturalist data. Other people will keep them in captivity and a couple small research papers that I found about them. These guys are found down in tropical rainforests in you know, southern Mexico and Central America, and they are often found in caves or near cave systems, where, as with a lot of the other old world rat snakes that we've talked about several times at this point, they like to eat bats, or at least that's what has been documented or theorized. Out of the separate species of the Pseudolaphe, oftentimes called the Yucatan rat snake, which is differentiated from the Flavarifa, they have been documented eating bats for surezies. 
However, many, if not all, of the Flavorifas, the yellow red rats, as well as the giant long list of them, almost all of them are collected on the road or on the ground. So potentially most of the documented behavior of eating bats might only be with the Yucatan species or maybe just one or two of the several individual subspecies that frequent those bat areas more than the others do. Not 100% sure, and if anybody has more detailed information, I would please love to know about them. Now, that being said, those giant, giant bug eyes, probably helpful in snagging those flying bats that come in and out of the cave systems, right? As well as they are significantly more nocturnal than most species of snakes. At this point, we've kind of established that a large majority, at least of the ones that we keep in the hobby, are very crepuscular, which means they're active shortly before and into night, and then shortly before and into dawn. So kind of like right in between the day-night cycles. The favorifas seem to be almost exclusively nocturnal. Definitely not 100%, but they certainly seem to be much active longer into the night and during more hours of the night than during the day than compared to other rat snake species as other commonly kept species as well. Really, really cool snake. They are sometimes also found during and near human habitation, likely drawn in by rats that also just kind of come with human habitation. They have been seen in, bar in barns, on roads, near houses and buildings and things like that. Just a really cool species of snake. They're also somewhat arboreal. So as we all know, lots of rat snakes do enjoy climbing. These guys, as being found in cave systems, as well as supposedly they also eat nesting birds, are probably a little bit more arboreal than other species of rat snake. And in fact, after very first finding out the, about them on Instagram a number of years ago, I saw the very first one in person at the Chiricahua Desert Museum, and it was perched up at the very top of the corner, right on the other side of where its UV light was shining down. And then as we continued throughout the day, it kind of poked its head out. It just kind of like basked slightly just with its head and neck exposed, and then it went right back into its little corner for the rest of the day. Probably it would spend most of the day, and then at night it would probably cruise its entire very vertical setup. Really, really cool species of snake. I love these guys. Now, so when we said, when I very briefly talked about keeping these guys, when we think about keeping them in captivity, number one, a lot of them are probably going to be wild caught unless they are labeled head anery. And even then, they may not. And we'll get to that in a second. So, keeping these guys, you probably want to keep them very similar to other rat snake species, although being from Central America, probably want to up the humidity a little bit, give them plenty of places to climb, maybe a little bit more heat. Now, the areas where these guys are found down in Honduras, Belize, southern Mexico, it stays pretty warm all of the time. At night, when they're most active, there isn't even that usually of a radical night drop. It basically averages in the mid-70s to low 80s basically throughout the year. There is a like a winter and a summer down there, but it mostly stays fairly consistent. So an ambient temperature with a very low basking spot, because you still want to provide them an opportunity to bask and get a little bit of UVA, UVB, probably a very low basking spot, probably not even over 90 degrees um, with very low wattage ultraviolet light, like maybe one of the uh, first call Vivtex Sure Sun bulbs would be a really good um, idea for a low wattage Acadia bulb or something like that. In this case, maybe one of the compact bulbs or the LED uh, Vivtech bulbs versus the fluorescent strip because they don't need, they probably don't need quite as much ultraviolet light. Really, really cool species of snake. These guys are really fun. As you can see um, in a lot of the videos, there is an older anery species, and this is actually a nat an anery species, anery morph. This is a natural occurring morph that pops up very frequently in the wild as well as they have their regular kind of reddish orange reticulated looking uh, look as well. Now with this part where I'm not 100% sure that the anery isn't necessarily just from one of the subspecies or maybe even just the Yucatan that just gets mixed in with the others. And again, if somebody works with these guys more than I do, more than the research that I found, I would love to know more. So please let me know down in the comments or email me or message me or whatever. I would love to talk more. Um, and I've reached out to a couple other uh, breeders that I'm waiting to hear back from, but I just really wanted an opportunity to talk about this really cool species. This older adult anery one is from my friends, Brandon Exotics. 
Um, again, they're still working on all their stuff. I'll retroactively add their, all their stuff. But this was the first one that I actually got to work with hands-on really cool. As you can see, its eye isn't quite as bugged out anymore. And it looks very similar to that like anery corn snake where even the front part of its mouth has that kind of like white under chin and a little bit yellow around just like the anery corn snakes. The little baby that you've seen is actually my new addition. I love her to death. She's so, so cool. She's actually Het Annery. She's from a breeder here in the United States, so CBB. I'm not really sure about the adult one from Brain Exotics. Um, they were just sold to as a night snake, so they actually thought it was uh, one of the rear fang colubrids until I went, oh my gosh, oh, this is so cool. And then a little bit more research, we've concluded, in fact, this is one of the Pseudolaphae. Just really, really cool. My girl is Het Annery as well. I think I said that already, not quite sure. I'm just kind of going on a tangent again just because I'm so excited talking about this type of snake. Um, she is just pounding pinkies right now. So another one of the differences that I didn't quite get into earlier was that these guys seem to have larger eggs and smaller clutches. I don't know if they double clutch like a lot of the other colubrids do, but they seem to have larger babies. That means that they are hatching out larger and they supposedly take to food a lot faster as well. I do know that my girl took to frozen thaw pinkies almost immediately. Like she was less than a month old and had already eaten a couple times. And then now that I got her, she just is, she's just pounding them easily over and over and over again. She's still in quarantine right now. So I'm trying not to interact with her too much, but that quarantine period is almost up. She's looking great and I'm super excited to be working with her more. Amazing species of snakes, super underrepresented. Nobody really talks about them. Um, and again, if anybody does work with these more, um, please let me know down in the comments or want to chip in your two cents or anything like that. As with a lot of the species that aren't commonly kept, I do miss things or even misspeak sometimes. So please be sure, let me know down below in the comments or message me or whatever it is. And you know, if you know a little bit more about it, I'd love to have a bit of a conversation. Really, really cool just wanted to sit there and talk a little bit about this amazing species of rat snake, the Mexican rat snake, tropical rat snake, Honduran rat snake, the Central American corn snake. You get where I'm going with this, right? Heck, maybe at this point, now that I've said all these different things, maybe you guys have even seen at like a reptile show or something, oh, hey, maybe that was what it was. Or maybe you thought it was like a weird bug-eyed corn snake or some point down the road or, or at some point. It was just really cool species of snake. So that being said, thank you so much. I absolutely love talking about these species a little bit more in depth. It lets me learn um, even more about these things as well as gives me more creative ideas when it comes to hopefully better keeping practices. And hopefully it inspires you guys to have um, improved keeping practices as well. If you guys want to check out my playlist of other different species, I have a whole playlist. There's only 40 of them at this point. Um, if you guys want to learn about, if you want me to talk about a certain species, let me know down in the comments. I do write them all down. I try to make sure that I have an actual video of the animal that we're talking about versus just, you know, pictures of clip art and, you know, getting permission from like Instagram creators and stuff to use their pictures. I love to actually show the actual animal moving on video. So that's why it's taking me so long to do some of them. But for some of the people who've asked about like, you know, the black rats and the Eastern hognose and several other different species, I haven't written down. I haven't forgotten about you. I am working on it. Just tracking down the actual animals themselves as nice, impressive specimens. So again, thank you so much. Sorry for the little rant there at the end. But again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to hear me talk about something, let me know below. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you can. Check out the whole playlist. All of that fun jazz of social media and the click-through rate and everything like that. Hope you're having a great day. We'll check you next time.